Good afternoon and welcome to First Baptist Church Collingwood on this another Tuesday afternoon. I just want to share some further thoughts. Uh, we're going through the first chapter of Romans and uh, I want to, to read, to read it from uh, the uh, NLT. The New Living Translation. Verse 26. As uh, we left it by saying that uh, the Creator Himself who is worthy of eternal praise. Let's pause for prayer before I read. Thank you for this day, O oh God. We thank you for your creation and all that we can appreciate. That you are the one who holds all things together. And you love the world. And you long for people to come to you. And come to understand who you are. And come to know your son. Who you sent into the world to be our saviour. Our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who is with us and that we are never alone. And so we pray now as we read your word that you will just minister to us through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you can see, I've got a, a, a shirt on that uh, reminds me of uh, a trip we were able to make uh, to the Caribbean. And, uh, so I love the bright colours, and uh, on a warm day like today, this is a nice and cool shirt. Anyway, we come to Romans chapter 1, and uh, we come to a part where, uh, verse 26, that is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires, because they, verse 25 says, they traded the truth about God for a lie. So God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking. And let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness. Sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sin sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do those things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Isn't that sad? You see, God loves us and he wants us to follow his ways. The Bible tells us we're born in sin. When we come into this world, we are sinners. And, and uh, the tendency is to go in the wrong direction. We need a correction and that correction can only come when we repent of our sin. And turn to God. In my younger days, we, uh, as a group of young people, went into the town of Newport, and we, on a Saturday night, we had a, a special uh, outreach, and it was called Turn to Christ. We would go out into the streets of Newport, where young people would just be walking back and forth 
Mm. And mm. invite them to come and, and join us. Many did. We often had a full house at that time. And God used it as means of reaching many. And the opportunity is still there today. But if we do not accept God, then what happens is that our old nature takes over and that nature is sinful and does things that are unsavory. Verse 28 says, Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. I believe that's what's happening today. God is allowing people to do as they please. He has offered and he still is offering new life through knowing Jesus and forgiveness and mercy. But that needs to come from a person who recognizes their need of God. Listen to what, how he describes the lives of the people who refused to turn to God. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, Hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. I don't need to deal with each of those. It's the opposite of the way that we are when we've accepted Christ to be our Savior and we allow the Holy Spirit to make us holy, to refine us, to get rid of all those behaviors. One of the key things that seems to be in the society in which we live today is hate. One group against another. But God calls us to be a people who love as he loves. Besides those behaviors, he says they are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. Somehow that describes today. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless and have no mercy. Is that not sad? It leaves us in a very sad state of affairs as we look around us and we recognize that there's so much deception. There's a ceasefire at the moment in Israel, between Gaza and Israel. There have been reports and reports have not been truthful. There have been deceptive reports about what's going on. We have to rely on what we are told through the media in one way or another, but when the media withholds truth in order to portray their agenda, it is a sad state of affairs. There is a hatred for Jews. There's a hatred for Israel. There's a hatred for God. J. 
Jesus encourages us to demonstrate love, to show love. And in these days, that must shine from us as God, by his Holy Spirit, helps us to be the people he's called us to be. God expects of us who trust him. He expects us to be respectful of others, to demonstrate love and compassion, to recognize that it is God who judges Jesus taught we need to check ourselves first before judging other people we know that there will be hatred towards us Jesus said that they hated me so don't be surprised if they hate you The world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world, Jesus said. So as believers, as members of First Baptist Church Collingwood, let us demonstrate love and compassion. Let us hold our lives open before God and, and be a people who bring joy instead of sadness. God let people do their own thing. He still does. And if they choose to ignore him and choose to go against him, they will have to suffer the consequences. But we need to be open to God and share with people that God loves them. He wants them to turn from their wicked ways and turn to him to experience new life that he gives. There are many who are turning against God and encouraging others to do that. We're living in days of challenging days. We're still not able to meet as a church and we can allow ourselves to be depressed and feel down, frustrated. We can certainly say that happens to me too. But let us recognize that the joy of the Lord is our strength. He loves us. He doesn't leave us alone. There is a song that we used to sing, God is still on the throne, and he will remember his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you. God is still on the throne. I say hallelujah. When we see what is happening around us, remember God is still in control. Things may be getting crazy out there and people's actions may be fulfilling their own lusts. But we need something that is deeper than just the lust of the flesh. We need to have an experience of God that draws us close to him. He is changing us. He is transforming us by his Holy Spirit. He is, and sometimes refining us. That means that sometimes we have to go through the fire to, to be purified. Sometimes we've gone through difficult times in our lives and 
we can know that God will bring us through. He lifts us up. Don't be depressed. Instead, know that God loves you. His Son came into the world for you. He wants a relationship with you. In order to have that, we need to recognize that God is and is a rewarder of those who turn to him. You know, one of the things I'm thankful for in my life is as, as a child, we were encouraged to learn scripture verses. And many of those scripture verses come back to mind at the, at the right time. The truth of God's word changes us. He loves us. I pray that you will know his presence and turn away from whatever it is that's attracting you and pulling you away from him. Let that go. The writer of the Hebrew says about uh, letting go. And we need to do that sometimes. As we live our lives, we need to let go of those things that maybe we held dear at one time. He loves us and wants us. to be a people who demonstrate his love. God loves you and he loves me. In Hebrews 12, he says this, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially that sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with, with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Let's demonstrate the love of God in our lives as we continue to try to understand the day and age in which we live and come to understand his love for mankind. Be a people who are known by their love. A people of faith that we might be bringing a message of hope in these times when many people feel hopeless. Don't despair. God is near. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Help us to come close to you. Let us forsake those things that sometimes drag us down and Trip us up. As we look around, we see many have turned away from you. And Lord, you love them. And you long for them to turn to you. Help us to be the means by which some will turn from their ways and come your way. I pray this in Jesus' name.